everybody, my name is Dr Emma Wynell and I'm a lecturer in the School of Biosciences at Cardiff University. Today I've been given the pleasure of a 10 minute slot to talk to you about a condition that I've been working on um, for many years in both the laboratory and the patient clinic and that is Huntington's disease. It's a condition that I feel very passionately about and today I want to tell you a bit more about it uh, so that you can understand it a bit further. So Huntington's disease was first described uh, by George Huntington back in 1872, so a really long time ago. And this was a condition that he described and it later went on uh, to bear his name. He described patients walking into his clinic with chorea-like symptoms. So this word chorea comes from the Greek meaning to dance. And you may have heard of Huntington's disease referred to as Huntington's chorea. That's because chorea is one of the symptoms of the condition that people uh, develop as the condition goes on. But it's not the only symptom. We know that actually before those really overt shaking-like movements, people with Huntington's disease can also have cognitive and psychiatric symptoms as well. So today, rather than Huntington's chorea, it's more accurate to refer to Huntington's disease as Huntington's disease. So Huntington's disease is a neurodegenerative condition, but if you haven't heard of it, don't worry. Um, I'm not terribly surprised because it's a, a rarer neurodegenerative condition than things like Alzheimer's disease or Parkinson's disease. And that's why for me it's really important to do talks like this uh, to make me people more aware of the condition. So if we look at the Huntington's brain that you can see uh, here on the left, you can see that in comparison to the person without the condition, the brain has shrunk, we call this atrophy, and you can see in the middle there, there's a bit of um, loss as well, that's cell loss. And this just shows the pathology of Huntington's disease, because it affects a part of the brain known as the striatum. And if we move on to this next slide, you can see where that is within the brain. So it's right in the middle, in the centre of the brain. And that means this condition can be quite difficult to treat. Huntington's disease shows uh, a range of symptoms, and I alluded to these earlier, so motor, cognitive and psychiatric symptoms, and these symptoms are fairly unique for the individuals. They can manifest very differently uh, depending on the individual person. And this is why I find Huntington's disease such an interesting condition uh, to research. Huntington's disease is quite unique in that it's genetic and it has a single genetic cause. Uh, that means if people have the gene for Huntington's disease, they will unfortunately go on to develop the condition. And typically, uh, from the clinical diagnosis of Huntington's disease, about a 10 to 15 year window on average, and we do talk in averages, uh, before unfortunately the, de the, the disease does lead to mortality. But there's loads of really exciting research going on to help people who are living with Huntington's disease, to help people living with a condition and also their families. And this moves me on to some research that I was fortunate to be able to do that looks specifically at brain training. So the idea behind this is that if you can train the brain, then you might be able to prevent some of the degeneration that you see in the condition. Now, when I started this research, there was evidence in preclinical models and also in other conditions such as Alzheimer's disease and Parkinson's disease that brain training may have some sort of benefit but nobody had ever really done it in Huntington's disease before. So this was my project to look at brain training and whether it might have an influence or help people and families living with the condition. So when we talk about brain training, I think lots of people um, conjure up different things in their mind. So have a think about what brain training means to you, because there's all sorts of different types of brain training. Even things like Sudoku um, and crossword puzzles are types of brain training. Maybe they're not quite as snazzy as computer games, but they are still types of brain training. But for my study, I was looking at computerised um, brain training, 
and I was looking to see if this could potentially help people living with a condition. Now that study I'm currently um, writing up but it was a very early study and I thought uh, while we're watching this video it might be a bit of fun to do a bit of brain training ourselves. So a slide is going to pop, pop up on the screen and what I'd like you to have a go at doing is shouting out the colour of the ink that the word is written in. So after three, they're all going to pop up and I want you to just keep shouting out the colour of the word that the ink is written in. Are we ready? Let's do some brain training. Okay, let's go. Shout those words out, loud and proud. Oh, oh. Aha, okay. So I confess, maybe I was a little bit mean there um, because what happened is that the colour of the ink that the word was written in changed. So initially we had red, the word red, written in the colour red. Then we had blue written in blue, green written in green, etc. But what happened as the task went on is that you were challenged, your brain was confronted um, with a bit of a problem because the word read something different to the colour of the ink that the word was written in. This is called the Stroop test, it's a classic neuropsychological test. You can get free versions of the Stroop test online if you want to challenge other people and then give it a go yourself. But now you know my kind of devious trick, should we give it another go? Should we see how you do the second time? Okay, let's go! Shout those words out! Okay, how did you do? Maybe a bit better that time or maybe a bit more practice is needed. This is a really hard task to practice and to train your brain in and get better at so don't worry um, but it's just a fun task to have a little go at. So my study was looking at brain training in Huntington's disease. It was a very small early stage study and one of the main findings was really that we need to be able to get people um, to play the games because problems with motivation or apathy, a feeling of kind of not being bothered to do things, can be um, early symptoms of the condition. So that was one of my um, key findings. But for me, probably a more interesting question is what I like to call the so what question. Because you might get really good at naming those colours that we just did, but so what? How is that going to impact on your life? Uh, and in this case the condition. So for example if you um, train the brain doing all sorts of number puzzles will that help you kind of adding up your shop as you go around the supermarket? Will uh, games that look at language help you with conversation and speaking to others? So that's what my study was really all about and Another thing that I wanted to just plant the seed of um, in this talk, some of the really interesting ethical um, and moral dilemmas that Huntington's disease raises. Because I said it's a genetic condition, you can have a genetic test um, for the condition which will tell you whether you carry the disease causing gene. And the vast majority of people will have a family history of Huntington's disease, so they'll be aware of this. And this raises all sorts of really interesting ethical issues, such as um, whether people would like to have that test in the first place, and if they do, who should know about that information. So Huntington's disease is a really interesting condition to be able to work on, and I'm hoping that this um, small video has given you a bit more information about the condition, so that next time you hear of it maybe, um, you'll be able not only to know, oh yeah, I've heard of Huntington's disease, I know a little bit about it, and you can tell other people about it too. So thanks for joining me, I hope you've learnt um, a little bit, and it's been great to talk to you.